and welcome to the Rowley Municipal Lighting Plant Board of Commissioners meeting of December 14th, 2016. The time being 7 p.m., I call the meeting to order. First order of business is Citizens Query will be from 7 to 7.10 p.m. Item number two is review and accept minutes from previous meeting. Everybody had a chance to uh, look at the October minutes? Yeah. Okay, motion to accept from Mr. Chairman. Okay, is there any, no changes or issues or anything anybody sees? Uh, I have a motion. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor of accepting the October 12, 2016 Commissioner Meeting Minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Three is review and or approved 2017 capital and O and M budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dan, you foresee any increases? Very mild increases, uh, only on some accounts. Most of the accounts I held steady uh, from last year. Um, there are a couple of accounts that were um, needed to be increased from last year, um, 920 and 903 being two. Uh, those are basically salary accounts. Okay. And those would be increased uh, to uh, not only to account for the July 1st raise of last year, but also to factor in a small percentage raise for this year as well. Okay. But other than that, most of the accounts have stayed uh, flat, if not a 1 or 2 percent increase. Very good. The power supply account is one account that remained flat um, only because the, the uh, power supply agreements that we've been signing lately have seen a decrease in their cost. So our actually power supply costs have remained, the budget amount has remained steady over the last mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it to keep that way, if not decline a little bit over the next year or two. And that's, that's a big number, that's 90% of our budget. <clears throat> On the revenue side of it, we did so I did a little bit of rebalancing in the revenue accounts, mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, kept them fairly flat. Uh, to account for some of the uh, the jostling around that of accounts have we done, uh, moving them from municipal to either small commercial or just to, to
to kind of uh, rebalance the accounts so that the demand accounts go where they're supposed to go. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a uh, small commercial or medium commercial instead of a instead of a, a municipal because sometimes if you keep them in a municipal rate, they don't always benefit. Sometimes if they they may benefit more by having a small commercial rate or a medium commercial rate than a municipal rate. Even though they pay the demand charge, mm -hmm. they still the kilowatt hour charge is less. So if they don't use the demand, they actually pay less for kilowatt hours than they would on the municipal side of it. Poles we looking to replace next year? Probably in the order of uh, probably fifty to sixty again okay, so next year. Okay. Any transform transformers also, or is that just in case of more to replenish stock than anything else? We haven't had a lot of residential development where we would need to, right. to purchase tra new transformers. The only ones that we've purchased would be for voltage con conversions rather than new residential development. Okay. On the commercial side, we <coughs> have purchased a few large transformers, for, but those have been purchased by the developer instead of by the right. department. Sure. Capital side, the um, there's a couple of increases on the capital side on uh, on account 364 and 365. Um, looking into the future and seeing the maintenance we have to do next year, purchasing the poles and transformers. There are a few lines. Uh, Weathersfield Street. We want to continue the three phase run of Weathersfield Street down to um, Bradford. Box Bradford. Thank you. Right. Down to Bradford Street. Right. And then down Bradford Street down to uh, one thing. Uh, going this way towards uh, Summer Street and all the way back to so we can make that tie. Okay. Yeah. But eventually, I mean, eventually it'll come down that far, but yeah. we're concentrating <clears throat> on doing that part of it. There are some other lines that we have to, other maintenance things that we yeah. have to do, um, poles that we need to change. Independent Street, we just changed a few poles. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're looking to uh, Weathersfield Street change a few poles down the end, but the minor things, mm -hmm. just secondary poles and you know some single phase primary poles. The um, other than that, the the only other accounts that I've increased on the capital side would be leased property on customer premises, and that is a account that we use mostly for private area lighting. Mm -hmm. So at, mo a lot of accounts. A lot of customers have wanted to swap to LED fixtures, so we've been purchasing more LED fixtures to replace yard lights or private area lights with uh, LEDs. And the street lighting account has I up the street lighting account because we're going to start replacing more and more uh, high pressure sodium fixtures with LEDs. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I want to get to the point where we don't even buy high pressure sodium bulbs anymore. Instead, when, it, when the bulb goes out, we actually just replace the whole fixture. But I, I don't think we're to that point yet. I think we'll give it a couple more years before we get to that. Or maybe next year or the following year we'll get to that point. What's our percentage of conversion now? About a third. About a third. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, I think we have 300, uh, about 340 replaced out of uh, 700. Oh. Right around there. That's good. Boy, they really do make a big difference, don't they? Yeah, they do. The only problem we have is it, it seems like every time we go out to order fixtures, there's more new manufacturers and vendors out there, so it's it gets difficult to to weed through all the all the prices and all the vendors and all the different kind of fixtures yeah, that are out yeah. there. And the quality. Yeah. Too. It, well, that's the thing because a lot of them are new fixtures, so yeah. it's hard to test the quality. 
mm-hmm. when they're, they're on the market. It's like yeah. buying a brand new. Yeah. Are, the, are the bulbs um, for the, the LEDs, are they the same universal fits, or are they different fixture, different? Different fixture, different, um, different lighting patterns, different type of optics on a lot of different LED fixtures, okay. different um, cobra head style in other style fixtures. So there's there's a numerous uh, different um, types of th- types of fixtures, dif- types of LEDs. Okay. So you don't want to buy a a light that may be you know, obsolete in a couple of years, and then the manufacturer has gone out of business. It, with the fixture that last, I mean, it wasn't so bad before because you, uh, the fixtures would only last 10 years maybe. Right. Now mm-hmm. they're scheduled to last 20 to 25. Mm-hmm. So you, you, when you buy an LED fixture, you're kind of, you're buying it long term. Mm-hmm. So you buy a fixture, if, if you tend to, to buy a cheap fixture, and it is a cheap fixture, then, you know, it, you may get 10 years out of it, but it's mm-hmm. not, it's, that's only half its lifespan. So and they range anywhere from four hundred dollars down to a hundred and a quarter, really? as far as a huge range in price. Wow! And the technology's been changing so fast. Yeah, that it just it keeps going that way. And you, they really you don't even replace the the lamp. There is no such thing as a lamp. No, it's just a a uh, power circuit with a circuit board, and it's right. got the. LEDs embedded yeah. in it, and once they go, you just go and buy another fixture. I mean, it's they last. The it's supposed to last is, about 20 years. Yeah, the light, last 20 years. Years. Mm-hmm. yeah the, the light degrades over time. Yeah. Because there are, and another thing with the LEDs, there are some LEDs that have numerous LED, um, I can't remember the name you call it, the, the small LED circuit boards in mm-hmm. the light. The diodes, yep. some very small diodes. Some have larger diodes. So, it, it again, it's just different type of manufacturers, different fixtures, and it's just trying to weed through all that when we sure. when we go out and order Depends fixtures. Depends on when it was manuf- when it was invented, really. It yeah. started off with the, with, the, with the mess, and right now it's getting better and better every time, every day. It is. They are slowly yeah. getting better. Um, Really, uh, there's nothing on the transportation for capital budget for next year. Uh, there is some money in the structures and improvements office, and mm-hmm. we had talked about r- roof replacement and things like that. So uh, there are some uh, maintenance issues that I have to take care of on the building itself. So th- there's some money in there for that. But it, the capital budget's down about 100000 from last year, mostly because of the, the vehicle purchase last year. Right, right. Okay. Do you want to vote? Do you want to vote on this? Please. Yes. I'll give you a motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion? Yeah. You want a second, Mr. Chairman? Accept the, the, uh, the uh, capital budget for the next year. Okay. Ken, Ken's seconding the motion. All those in favor of accepting the capital budget for... 2017, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. All right, item number four update on Rowley Solar Project. This has been kind of a roller coaster ride with, this, with the solar project. <laughs> um, it went through a number of different phases. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a phase when it was really really good to go and we were everybody was excited about the project not that i'm not excited about it now but then it was kind of the brakes went on when um the conservation commission ruling was challenged uh, they have since um the dep has ruled on that and they have basically uh, gone ahead and said the yeah. conservation commission was correct they've agreed with the ruling so they've uh, passed that test the person who put in the challenge on the on the conservation commission appeal i mean ruling <laughs> did not appeal it so they did not go to the next step so basically they got the okay to go ahead with the project so the project is is a go uh, we're in the final stages of negotiating the purchase power agreement which should be done within the next i'd say next couple of weeks 
the uh, the project is going to financially close with the financial developer probably within the next week or two as well. Um, the project is scheduled for construction early next year uh, with a final completion date in output by June of next year. So it, it is a go, it is moving forward. Uh, there's just some very small final details that we have to work out with the, with the developer and then we'll be good to go. So now, are both projects going forward? There's, there's been a rumor that the... I don't think the Route 1 one will not make it, will make it because there was a lot of, when they did the test boring at the site, they found a lot of material or, or ledge underneath that they could not drive the pilings into. So financially, it wasn't going to mm -hmm. make it only because of the extra work they had to do on the site. So okay. there hasn't been any talk of it. I'm not going to say it's, it's, it's done. It's completely done, but I know but, it's, there's been some rumors floating, so but those things happen. Yeah, and, and the, um, the IA, or Interconnection Agreement, has been negotiated for both sites. Mm -hmm. So the, that site could move forward if they, if they decide to. <clears throat> it's just, and they did get the Conservation Commission to rule on that site as well. So they got that approval. It's just a matter of whether or not they want to uh, go forward with that project. All right, so we want to go to the next item, item number five, electric vehicle update, grant opportunity. I know we spoke, uh, I believe, two meetings ago, uh, the last meeting we had, um, Bob, you brought it up about electric cars, and we should look, really be looking into what's going, what's going on out there, and there was a grant opportunity for vehicle charging stations that we missed only because it was such a short-term grant. It was only, I heard about it on Friday, the paperwork had to be in Monday morning. Wow. So it, that, short. that didn't happen. That's <laughs> really short. Um, there are some other grants um, coming, uh, coming around. Um, I hear from the gentleman, uh, Vinny Vigucci from E&E. Mm -hmm. Who, who spoke at the last meeting. He's been keeping his, um, his eyes and ears open for grants that are coming around for electric vehicles and mm -hmm. charging stations. Um, I did forward you a program that uh, Braintree Electric Light Department is, is doing currently. Right. Um, it's a really neat partnership between the municipality and local um, dealers of mm -hmm. electric vehicles and a, another uh, who was the other contractor? Uh, Sagewell, uh, and Sagewell was the third party in the in the agreement, and um, it's something. It's it's a really neat program. Braintree residents get to test drive a vehicle at home, so they schedule it with the dealer. Their preferred customers at the dealership and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Not sure if this is what we want to go forward with. That's kind of what I'm looking for from the commissioners as far as where we want to go with this. Do we want to delve into um, something of this magnitude? Do you want to delve in just to move forward with rates and charging stations? And Because part of this program is they have intelligent charging stations so that Braintree is able to... Um, they're able to set when the charging stations come on mm -hmm. so that, and Bob, you'll kind of get where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of charging, if, if this really takes off and Braintree has 150, 200 cars, mm -hmm. everybody comes home work at 5 o'clock, everybody plugs their car in and right. instantly they, they're adding 2 megawatts to their peak at that right, right at that current time. Right. So what the intelligent charger does, and it, it's also programmable in the car, but the intelligent charging station, what it does is you can tell it to not come on right when the customer plugs their car in, but at a set time in the evening when during off-peak pricing. Okay. So that the customer's car mm -hmm. isn't charging when prices are high on the, at the wholesale level. So and it's an interesting program the way they're doing it. And if you want, I can talk to um, 
sage well and kind of mm -hmm. get what else they're doing uh, for different customers, whether it be a Miss Palette or even IOU, just to see, mm -hmm. you know, if there's, if there's even if they can tailor something like this for us mm. and we can look at it and say, oh, yeah, that, that would fit for us or that wouldn't fit yeah. for us. Well, or, we, get, we get a few projects coming down the road. Uh, I don't know if you heard about the uh, motel that's over here. There's a purchase and sales agreement on it, and they're going to uh, change things around over there. And to me, that would be an ideal spot to put in some charging stations. Because mm -hmm. you got people coming in from out of town, uh, a lot of them, if this electric vehicle thing goes, will probably be using electric, at least some of them will be anyway. And uh, they're going to change the whole situation over there around. They're going to take a lot of the buildings down, they're going to put a restaurant in down in the back side of it next to the house, and the house is going to be part of the restaurant. It would be a way to tra attract um, business into town. Mm -hmm. Also, um, do you think the train station would be a mm -hmm. place for it? Part of that grant uh, that I was mentioning earlier was it had to be in a, it was preferable to be in a public place. Okay that people frequented so I mean the community ra commuter rail station is a perfect opportunity because right. they come in uh, they park their car for the day they charge it and then when they get back in at night it's charged they go home Who pays for that? it's um, that I need to talk to Sagewell about to see how they work and how they, who gets whether they pop in a credit card or whether they have to right you know, right separate mm -hmm. card. But are, are, are they doing that right now? And, and I, I don't know. What, what is Ames Amesbury? How do they do it? They have a few over there. Well, I don't know if they they have a pay program or they have a. Most charging stations require a credit card. Credit card. Okay. So you basically you park, you swipe your card. Basically, the charge would go on your credit card. Okay. Municipalities are a little different only because you can't resell electricity. Yeah. So we would have to be involved somehow because <coughs> a, a company like can't come in and put a charging station in. Right. And we would put a meter on that and then they would bill the customer. Right. So that's re that's reselling electricity that they already purchased, and they can't do that. So it's okay. <laughs> we have to somehow work that out with the company that did the charging station as to how it and how it worked. Okay. Yeah, that that really does make it difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's not definitely not something that can't be overcome. It's just mm -hmm. we just need to work through all those things, and I'm sure it's been done before. I'm sure <laughs> some of these big municipalities. In uh, like Concord or Braintree or, or Hingham, they, I'm sure they have on. charging stations somewhere in town that they've already worked through this process. New reports got them. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Whereabouts they have them, Kenny? Whereabouts? You know, the library parking lot is next door. Yeah. Huh. Oh, they're in there. They're in there. Okay, I haven't been up to li that library yeah. in a while. Okay. I think there's, I think there's two stanchions that. They can oh, okay. Take, Just I, as they go in the parking lot, they're right there. Mm -hmm. I take a ride up there tomorrow morning and take a look at it. Mm, you see yeah. them there, yeah. yeah. Uh, but also along the same lines is uh, I sent you an earlier with an uh, I sent you an article earlier from APPA from mm -hmm. Public Power Daily that um, kind of describes what Massachusetts is doing as far as grant opportunities for mm -hmm. for homeowners and and what they're giving back to uh, purchases for electric cars and they have this that grant or not it's not really a grant it's more like a rebate program for mm -hmm. customers but also they have grant programs for municipalities they have grant programs for um, businesses where you go buy the like Braintree Electric has three or four electric vehicles in their fleet that they basically almost paid nothing for because with the grant opportunities and everything else it's it ended up being a really good buy for the utility. Hmm. So it's just, I'm kind of looking for direction as to where you want to go with this. and Right. I think we need to keep an eye on it at least, at the very least. Yeah, we're going to do something. Keep, yeah. keep an eye on it at the very least, and you know, hopefully maybe you'll do, to change some of these things around and, and start to put it together. Yeah, I mean, I think we should be ahead of the curve on this yeah. and um, mm -hmm. be ready for when, because we have had requests from at least one customer 
-hmm. you know, about right. what we offer for charging stations or mm -hmm. what we offer for like off-peak pricing for charging stations, which at the current time we don't offer anything. Right. But I think we should really investigate or at least look into something of that nature so that it's when... Especially since we, you know, just last couple of days, we've seen the price of oil up from 42 Forty-two dollars a gallon, up to fifty-three. I think it was yeah, yesterday or today. Talking is going to go to sixty. Yeah. So I think um, you know, I think this could be an opportunity now to take a look at really take a look at electric cars. It might. I think. Uh, I don't want to misquote it, but I, believe, I don't know if it was in this. Um, they have a, a basically a conversion factor mm -hmm. between uh, electric vehicle and gallons of gas. Yeah. And they said that um, uh, it's probably not going to be in here, but I can I can get it for you. Sure. It was a it was equivalent. Well, I'm not going to say it because I'm not going to say it correctly. But they they have a conversion factor that tells you if your gallon of gas is this much, yeah. how much that equates to in kilowatt hour price. Oh, okay. And I believe it was around I don't know. I'll I'll get you the numbers, but. Yeah. That way you can see it. But it was actually, we would be in, in the money as far as where our kilowatt hour price is. I think the price of a gallon of gas would have to be like $3.50 or $4 a gallon. Oh, okay. So right now we're, we're in the money as far as it's cheaper to actually charge your car with electric than it is to buy gas oh. for, that, for the same mileage. And we don't even have to buy kilometers. Nope. <laughs> well, the other thing is the convenience. <laughs> you don't have to go run to the gas station. It, it's, well, it's, it, it is convenient, but there's also um, a lot of people are have, uh, there's a term for it now. I'm like, there's a term for everything now. <laughs> but there's, uh, they're afraid that they're going to run out of battery power. You know, because oh, the, mileage right, right. Is, the mileage is limited. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're afraid that they're gonna, not going to, be able to get where they're going, or they—well, they can get where they're going. They just can't get. Back. Or they can't get <laughs> home, or they can't find a charging yeah, exactly. station. Exactly. Well, like that, that <laughs> article was saying. You know, I, 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 I'm going back like three or four months when we read it, and it was talking about you know people going cross country or going on a on a, on a trip, and they're looking at the the battery recharging within an hour. Say so you, you know you go across country you stop for you know lunch or something like that or you're going to take a, you know, a short trip say up to Maine or something like that you would stop along the way get some to eat and you'd charge your vehicle and you know by the time you came back out be a quick charge and off you go again mm -hmm. yeah some of these so, charges are a half hour 45 minute charge right to for full charge or quick charges but the quick charges are also the ones that draw all, yeah. A load. I mean, they draw a, a good load on your on your house or right. on your. Basically, if there's a lot of them in the utility, yeah. on the utility yeah. itself. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're going to have to start thinking about power plants and everything else. And you know, if we start going the other way, you know, away from gasoline or some sort of a balance, anyways. Well, it, and the balance is shifting the load later on in the day. Right. So. Typically, um, we peak between four and, six four and six in the afternoon, because uh, in the summertime only because people come home from work. Yep. Turn the um, they, everybody turns their air conditionings on. They start cooking dinner. They, you know, and then as it gets to seven o'clock, all the lights are going on. So it's with an intelligent charger, you can actually shift that mm -hmm. later, so that the car is not adding to that already aggressive mm -hmm. load at that right. time so you can actually shift it to nine or ten o'clock and this and, and Bob you can help me with this it used to be very prevalent to have off-peak metering oh, everybody it, had it. It, it was they we were controlling water tanks we were controlling the conditioning units yeah I mean it but but then that has since faded away but yeah. now it's starting to come back around Coming again back on this with this particular especially component. with the especially with the price of electricity during the day Right. is so high compared to off-peak hours that people are going to start offering it only so they can so we can shave that spread the load up more evenly over the day rather than having these big peaks in the afternoons yeah. 
So I will keep you up to date, and I will call Sagewell, and I'll you know basically get some inf information from them, and you know we'll see what we can do about moving forward. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Item number six: changes to public records law. I'm not sure as uh, that if you. Um, if the town has done anything with this yet, as far as the changes, I don't know if you've had anything. But I'm, I'm coming at it more from the municipal side right. rather than the, well, I mean, it's from the light department side rather than the, the town side. So changes to the public records law that will affect our RMLP. Basically, I'll just run through this really quickly. Okay. Uh, municipalities and public agencies are now required to appoint a records officer for the municipality. Uh, the town generally would probably appoint somebody for that. Generally, it's the probably the town clerk. I'm not sure if town of Raleigh has done that yet or not. Um, I mean, at least from the Board of Selectmen's side, it wouldn't be the town clerk or yeah. such, but it would be the administrator. Okay. Uh, I'm not, yeah, in, and, th and that doesn't case. really matter. It's right. It usually when the the town appoints uh, a records access officer, it would be for the whole town. Um, she, she may not necessarily have access to the records of the light department, but the, the request would go through the That person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I would communicate with that person to get them the records that, you know, okay. for the public records request. If we appointed, uh, RAO, it would be it would require compliance with certain legal requirements, uh, including publishing guidelines to requesters, and that may be le that may be best left to the town itself. Yeah. It would be easier for just one part of one person in town to do it rather than multiple sure. agencies in town. Uh, individuals who have previously responded to requests may still do so, even with the appointment of an RAO. So, if the public request came into Debbie. Debbie said, please handle this. Um, I would actually just respond to the request directly because you can still do that. We've done sure. it before. Um, previously, you had 10 business days in which to issue a response to a request. Now that now within that 10 day period, the request must be actually fulfilled. If the request cannot be completed in 10 days, you must petition the supervisor of public records for an extension. So if it's Overly or, 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 or yeah, we won't be able to say that. Onerous. Onerous. Thank yes. you. Then you then you can request. You can actually send a letter to the requester saying, you know, we do, need more time to do this, mm -hmm. and that letter has to have certain information in it. But it also has to go to the supervisor in order to get the extension. The supervisor at the state level. Yeah. Yep. If the request is burdensome or cannot physically be completed in 10 days, a letter to that effect, which we just kind of went over. Mm -hmm. um, but now we must receive permission to respond beyond 10 days, and the new law indicates that we can receive up to an additional 30 days of extension. Uh, agencies can receive 30 days, while municipalities can only get up to 20 days. And basically, light departments are a little, they're not quite a municipality as mm -hmm. like the town's a municipality and not an agency but I would say we just stick with the 20 days and yeah. it would be easier that way um, any questions or so far no. municipalities must provide commonly requested records on a searchable website to the extent possible so where that involves us is basically putting minutes on our website and I've started to do that with the 2016 uh, mi minutes. Um, I think that would probably satisfy everybody as far as going, you know, st just starting with January of 16 sure. and going forward. Um, there is a note on the web page uh, where you can find the minutes that anything previous to 2016, you can just get them at the office with a records request. And that is the most popular request for a municipal light department is the minutes of meetings. Uh, if you must uh, search, redact, and or copy records no more than a $25 an hour charge, uh, $25 can be charged to the requester unless a petition is filed with the supervisor. Before, I believe, it was the highest paid person doing the records redaction or right. search. Now it's limited to that $25 per hour. 
Uh, if you lose a public records request dispute, you can be required to pay the requester's attorney's fees. <laughs> the exceptions to the definition of public records did not change. Municipal light plants are covered by the public records law just like any other public entity, but possess a specific exemption or exception that applies only to them in, at GL 16447D. And basically what that is is competitively sensitive material, um, power supply agreements, mm -hmm. things of that, you know, things of that nature, we can actually say, you know, this is, you know, not requestable public information. Right. It's because it's competitively it's sensitive. With multiple providers of the electricity. And you really don't want to be playing one against the other. So. Mm -hmm. And, and, that's, and that's, that's been around for a while. That's been around for a while, and that's a specific exemption you have to cite when you actually do the um, go into executive session. You actually cite that yeah. particular section of the law. So it's it's not it's not that bad. It's not. Um, it's definitely something we can handle. It's just I wanted to make you aware of it and the fact that you know it's just something we have to do going forward. Yeah. If you need a copy of the actual. Um, Public records are just let me know. I'll, I'll forward you a copy of it. But other than that, it's it's a lot of boring reading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that we? If there's nothing else, make sure I'm going to give you a motion to adjourn. Yeah, it takes priority. There was <laughs> uh, a comment on that. Uh, uh, Solar project. Have you seen the one in Newbury? No. On Route One? No. You know where the trip? Well, when you get to the lights there that w that go to Plum Island, that, yeah. that right there, there's a trash company right across the street. Right beside the trash company, there's a big solar, there's a big solar farm going in there. Oh really? Mm. I mean, good size. Okay. I don't know if anybody's seen it or not. I'll have to go up that way tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at the charging station. I'll take a look at that. Okay. Did we officially adjourn? No. No, not yet. I just gave the motion to adjourn. Okay. I need a second for the motion. Seconded. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We are adjourned. <laughs>